Hello, welcome to 5 Minute Friday number 10 and today we're going to look at fitting the four jaw chuck and indicating it so that it's true. Over the next few weeks we're going to be creating a number of apprentice toolmakers jobs so in that we're going to need to know about the different work holding systems. So next week is going to be a comparison of all of these systems but today it's looking at dialing perhaps the hardest of all these uh, work holding devices, the four jaw chuck. So let's get started by setting up the dial test indicator. This next step could be considered optional, but for the amount of time it takes, I think it's a good precaution to avoid any sign error. Um, we're going to set the DTI up to centre height, uh, just to ensure that we're um, not got any unnecessary errors in. And by mounting it on the compound slide, we can easily adjust the position. So with the DTI mounted, next we need to change the chuck over. So we're going to hit the emergency stop. So even though on these Colchester lathes we've got an interlock chuck guard, um, you can never be too safe. So E-stop on, and we need to protect the ways of the, the lathe as well. So we'll put a chuck board to protect the actual guideways of the lathe. Some lathes have a cradle, which is definitely a step up, but we're just going to use a simple piece of plywood and we can go about removing the chuck. So all of these operations require a very, very clean spindle nose and for the chucks to be kept in good condition as well. So we encourage our students to clean the cam locks before it goes away and before it goes on. And also make sure we give the spindle nose a good clean to make sure it's free of swarf. If you haven't already done so, we need to knock the gearbox out of gear because it's very difficult to pull the chuck round otherwise. So we'll put it in neutral just by putting it in between gear ranges and then it can move by a single finger. So unlike a three jaw self-centering, on a four jaw, each of the jaws is controlled individually. So the first part of the setup will be to align them roughly to the same value just but visually using these marks around the edge. And then tighten opposite sides a quarter turn. And that should bring us somewhere near. The next stage is to true this up using the DTI. So with the DTI now perfectly square to the workpiece, we will introduce it, set it to a round value and just check the current level of run out. Which is just over a full turn. So what we'll now do is we'll realize that if the plunger moves inwards then we get a clockwise rotation so if the workpiece is too far forward in the machine we'll get a clockwise rotation too far back we'll get a counterclockwise rotation so we'll find a high point in the clockwise direction which is there so this jaw needs to come this way and this jaw needs to come inwards. So we'll make a small adjustment. And we're always going to work in opposites. And we'll try again. And we keep going in that fashion until we square up the workpiece. So the final part of the job is once we've got it within a small range is to try and make the final corrections just by tightening so we've got a strong grip on the workpiece. So we've got it within about two hundredths which isn't too bad considering that this isn't a piece of machine material, it hasn't been ground, it's just stock form. So the surface imperfections, plus to which it's not going to be 100% in round. 
So one of the things you can do to practice this skill is the four jaw chuck challenge. There's plenty of these on YouTube. I know Ox Tools did a good uh, showdown. And if you, you want to have a go and post your time in the comments section, let me know and I'll try and, and beat your time. So next week we're going to compare the four jaw chuck and various other work holding systems in terms of speed and accuracy, speed of setup and accuracy of run out. So that'll be interesting to see just how this stacks up against things like a collet system or a three jaw chuck. And in other news, we've got a couple of exciting playlists coming up. We've got the Open Racer 3D printed radio control car project, and also the Apprentice Toolbox, where we're going to be manufacturing things like V-blocks, tap wrenches, die stocks, all of the standard apprentice jobs so that, to help people uh, develop the machining skills. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, do subscribe to us, leave a comment and like, and we'll see you next week.